Thank you everybody for joining. We'll just wait a few minutes as everyone gets into the room and we'll get started. Thanks again for your time today. Thanks for joining everyone. Uh, for those of you coming in, we will be starting in a minute or two here, just letting everybody trickle in. I think we should be good to uh, get it started here. <clears throat> uh, and we will be recording it and uh, have a recording link for you all if you do miss any parts or if you have to take off early, we'll be sending that out. Uh, my name is Blake Roberts and I am the Creative Point Solution Specialist at ByteSpeed. Uh, thanks for joining our uh, connectivity and cybersecurity webinar today. Uh, I'm joined by some folks from Cradle Point, Radio IP, uh, and Ericom, they will be having the the bulk of our content here today. A lot of good stuff prepared for you. Uh, but before I hand it off to them, I'll just give you all a little bit of a background on Byte Speed. Uh, Brian, if you want to navigate to slide number two, please. So Byte Speed was founded in 1999, originally as a custom desktop shop. Since then, we've expanded into a comprehensive line of IT solutions and services, uh, and we're a very public sector focused companies, company. Uh, K-12 was our almost 100% of our customer base uh, back in 1999, still a big portion. Now we've expanded into higher ed and government, like folks, folks like yourself. Uh, some of our primary solutions, uh, as I said, we started off with desktops, We've got uh, Windows machines powered by Intel. Uh, we offer laptops, Asus, Lenovo. Uh, we also offer traditional wireless networking. Uh, we partner with Ruckus and Juniper on that front, custom servers, storage, uh, Eaton battery backups, things of that sort. We also partner with Bricada on the physical security side of things. Uh, and we are partnering with Cradle Point, who we're here to talk about today. Uh, we started working with Cradle Point back in 2020, uh, and since then, we've helped our clients deploy uh, thousands of uh, mobile uh, cellular routers in vehicles. Uh, back in 2020, the during the pandemic, uh, we really kickstarted our partnership working with K-12 to get school bus Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi into school buses to keep uh, students connected off campus. And since then, we've expanded into more of Cradle Point solutions. Uh, one custom solution I wanted to show you guys here before I hand it off is our W3 portal. Uh, so it's a battery powered Cradle Point router in a weatherproof box with a fan and antenna. Uh, really easy to use, simple as making sure it's charged, flipping the switch on, and you have about 12 to 16 hours of battery life uh, for a pretty much a Wi Fi hotspot wherever you want to take it with all the capabilities of Cradle Point. Uh, so I guess now I'll hand it off to Brian Mancuso from Cradle Point. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. So uh, my name is uh, Brian Mancuso. Uh, I'm a regional sales manager in the central region. So Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska. Um, and I've got Garrett Sawyer, who has Minnesota and the Dakotas and Wisconsin. Um, we partner pretty heavily in the, in the central region. And we kind of wanted today to talk a little bit about um where where this the you know keeping things secure is going so you kind of got three trifectas here that we bring together um besides the hardware piece the vpn piece and then what happens when you're uh for that data that's not going through the vpn tunnel and going out to the internet piece so the ability to keep all those you know secure comp and controlled in a um, in a central environment but increased throughput, increased speeds. Um, and there's a lot of new options and things that we've done out there to tweak that. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, just a little bit of background about us. You know, we're some of the largest law enforcement agencies use Cradle Point. 
Uh, we're well known in the mobile space uh, as well as uh, for your IoT and, and building spaces. Some of your largest cities out there use Cradle Point as well. So a lot of that IoT space out there, uh, we're well known for our failover and backup um, in keeping cities connected. Uh, we do all this through one pane of glass. So we have all these different verticals that we work in, but the nice thing is the IT department can control everything through one pane of glass. So you can control where things are going, how things are being used, who's using them, when they're allowed to use them, and then keeps them all secure within that same one pane of glass, which is pretty powerful out there. And by the way, we'll make this available if you guys will email Bytespeed or they'll email this deck back out to you in case uh, we, with something we missed. We'll have a Q&A section at the end in case you have any questions. So um, our hardware family is uh, pretty robust out there. Uh, you'll notice there one thing about them. First of all, there's two different colors, black or white. So everything that's white is an adapter. Everything is black is a router. And the basic difference in that means is an adapter just provides internet to a source. So if you have a Cisco box or other person's box out there, but you want a failover type solution, meaning you want internet to be able to get to it, you use one of our adapters. It's very easy. Uh, we've got models that go outside. They look like a pizza box, um, can go up on top of the roof um, and uh, real easy no attenuation loss from the antenna, and it's just an Ethernet plug-in right to the source. So lots of power and capability uh, when you're using an adapter. When you look at our router solutions, they're a very, very robust. So we start off on the left side with an E3000 with 11 Ethernets. Um, I actually put that in a, an emergency case box and put two of them in. They come with uh, rack mounts. And you know, very easily you can uh, deploy an emergency solution for like an EOC or uh, emergency command center. The E300 is a six ethernet ports. Again, all these are 5G. A lot of our equipment is dual modem capable, meaning uh, so each router can do two SIMs with one modem. We can add a second modem to make it two modems with four SIMs. So you would, what I like to call poor man's um, satellite is you can make these boxes very, very connected no matter what the uh, what the area that they're in. We then have the E100, again, going down into the smaller side. And then when you click over to the IoT side, we, we go from, you know, we've done everything from, um, if you ever seen the, like the blue lights and call boxes out there, you have our small IoT devices all the way up into larger speeds or fa and faster speeds. So high speed LTE or high speed 5G. The R2100 uh, at the bottom of the right there is our router on the roof. Uh, you can put it on the roof of a building. You can put it on the roof of a patrol car. I, I put them on highway patrol boats. You can put them on helicopters. Um, it's We basically took the guts of the, of the router and we stuck it up into inside the antenna and built an all-in-one solution. So pretty powerful, really robust, easy to deploy. The IBR 1700, 1900 is probably our um, what we're most well known for in the, in the mobile space. Uh, it's our uh, 5G boxes. Again, it, capable of adding a second modem to make always on so you never lose type connectivity. And the great thing is we do all this under one pane of glass. So one thing that we give you is a lot of analytics and information. It's just not just a connection but it's really a, a visibility into the world. How is my equipment running? How, how is it, you can map the network as you're driving around so you can say, hey, do I need to switch carriers? Do I need a second carrier? Do I need to let my carrier know there's a problem? You now have visibility into information. With information, you now can make decisions. So what we try to do here at Cradle Point is give you as much information as possible. When you, you saw previously on those, uh, like those E3000s or E300, some of the other uh, branch hardware, we can actually show you where your end users are using the data. Um, often a lot of people are like, well, you know, I see a lot of data is being used, but what are they doing with it? So we can actually show you how your uh, end users are traversing the network, where they're going, how much are they downloading up, how much are they downloading down and where they're going. So a lot of information, again, all in one pane of glass. And that's what the uh, our net cloud architecture does. It gives you all that 
all that information in one one area to go to view it and um you know easy easy uh, you know easy access um you can also provide um a parent child view so let's say you have um let's say you have a a shift supervisor and he wants to be able to maybe reboot his officer's devices if they're having trouble you know it's like night shift and he wants to be able to reboot if uh, an officer is having a problem and so you can give him grant him just remote access to do the reboot on his phone so we do have applications that, that run it um and or you maybe you just want to give people view access so a supervisor just wants to see where his fleet is so you can you can grant as much access as you want depending on what those users are so and you can do things like uh web filtering and and other things through through this one pane of glass that we've built it's also integratable with a lot of um, uh, providers out there like forward thinking to do gps uh, fleet management and stuff uh, we do work with juniper uh, so a lot of these things are actually um, integrated into uh, the netcloud manager so you can do it through one portal now i'm going to turn this over to uh, uh, mohit and james um, who are with Aracom? They are our cybersecurity side of this. So where you want to look about this is if you start to look as we start to peel this onion apart, right? I'm the hardware. From here now, your end users are starting to go to the internet, and then we also have the VPN piece. We'll talk about keeping it in the tunnel for those for that type of traffic that needs to get there. So I'll, I'll turn it over to Mohit and and Aircom team to talk about what they do. Awesome, thank you. Um, so going to uh, the next slide, um, really a lot of the attacks that we see coming in are from those zero day attacks for ransomware. Uh, a lot of the threats that we see you know, coming in really do come in from, from those vectors. Uh, what zero day really means is that you know it's unknown to uh, the greater public at the moment. Uh, mostly, you know, like a targeted attack or an attack that is created within minutes or hours of, you know, really being done. Um, and uh, what we kind of do there, if you can go to the next slide there, thank you, um, is from the web security perspective is really looking at where the user is going uh, and being able to really mitigate that. So as you set up your router, you have Wi-Fi connectivity. You now want to be able to really see where all those users are going, uh, but also be able to uh, do it in a secure fashion. So, you know, as we see users going out to say uh, a good or bad website, we can go ahead and say either allow or block it. So if you don't want users to go to say, for example, Facebook, you can go ahead and block that traffic. Or if you say want the user still to go forward into a, what we deem as a risky site, we can go ahead and isolate that traffic in our own cloud, in our own container. And what that really allows us to do is to, you know, have all the traffic sent to our cloud um, so that, you know, essentially if anything blows up, it blows up in the cloud, uh, not in your own environment. And uh, how we really do that, if you can go to the next slide, please, Brian, is, uh, kind of showcasing it here in this illustration is that as these um, attacks are created, uh, you know, and you're going on to your browser, we're seeing the traffic. And if we deem it to be, say, risky, uh, we can go ahead and isolate that into that container. And uh, what happens is that when the user goes onto that website, we're essentially just rendering an image back to the uh, user itself. So for example, when you go to youtube.com, you would have the entire web page that's downloaded that which could be thousands of lines of code. Uh, essentially what we're doing is just taking that image of, you know, say potentially that one third of the page that you're viewing. And as you scroll down, sending pixels back to you as you're scrolling back down. Um, that can also actually uh, help increase the speed of the environment as well as you know we're we're not looking at these uh, all of the source code for that web page we're just taking images and, and sending it back um yeah if we can move forward a uh, another huge threat that we're seeing from our side is from phishing 
And uh, phishing attacks really do come in from your email. Um, you know, we all potentially use Gmail or Microsoft Exchange, and there are inbuilt um, security technologies within there. However, they're still not looking at those zero day attacks. And those attacks are typically coming in from either say links or attachments. Um, and, uh, and that's really where, where those attacks come in. So if you can move on to the next slide, what happens is that, you know, we, we see these coming in, we all obviously have training, uh, not to click or whatever it may be yet, you know, it still happens. A lot of the customers that we speak to, unfortunately, uh, they're speaking to us after the fact of the attack happening. And what we want to do is really be able to help resolve and mitigate that from, from happening moving forward. Um, so yeah, if you can click that, please, uh, this really showcases what the attack looks like and how we're able to stop that from happening. Uh, so as the phishing attack is created, it's going through your threat intelligence, which essentially fails because it is that zero day, just unknown, uh, might be known within the next few hours, but that's, you know, typically, you know, when it's too late. Uh, so as it makes its way through your corporate uh, you know, mail server, we're uh, able to scan it for any uh, links, any uh, attachments that are there. And if we say deem it to be uh, you know, insecure or risky, we can go ahead and isolate that. And when we go ahead and do that, we can do certain things like put in read-only mode as well. Um, the reason why you want to do that is, you know, for example, we all get emails and if we still want to click on the link, say it doesn't work on your work email, you might go on your you know, phone or somewhere else and try and click it there. And uh, we really want to be able to potentially isolate that. So as the user clicks it, the user can still go and see that website. But now since it's in read only mode, they can't click on anything. They can't log in. And that really creates, uh, it helps create the DLP there. Um, so uh, another uh, aspect of what we can help uh, say uh, safely secure is your applications so instead of helping uh secure your users you're essentially doing the reverse uh you're securing the applications that they're uh, going and logging into and uh, this can really be a clientless approach so uh you know for all those users that might be uh contractors or coming in from their own byod devices uh, you can help uh, essentially isolate that application. Uh, so as users go on, you can do certain things like block uploads, downloads, um, really be able to sanitize and scan all the files that are there. And again, be able to isolate that. Um, so this way, you know, it really limits what the user can do, uh, but really gives you the access of what's going on and helping you do it in a secure fashion. And uh, this essentially is another illustration. Um, James, I don't know if you want to go through that. Uh, sure, you know. Yeah, I'll be happy to just kind of show you what it looks like underneath the hood. Again, from the end user perspective, it's very seamless. They log into a portal. Uh, here we have it called myapp1.ericomcloud.net. So each customer would get their own portal. Now, as they log in, we send that request into our uh, cybersecurity cloud. And this is where we can enforce some controls. We like to call them guardrails. So when your contractors and freelancers and any temp workers are working with your internal and private applications, you know, based on their role, you can set certain things to read-only mode or disable clipboard or disable printing, simply because they don't need those those type of features. And then this goes and connects to your either your SaaS application or that internal web server. And we basically provide the security for those applications and the data by using this isolation model. It's essentially providing an air gap between those endpoints that you can't really manage because again, these are your contractors, but they're accessing your SQL databases and web applications. So we wanna have a level of security between those endpoints and your critical applications and data. And that's what this solution is uh, aiming to provide. Uh, the next use case here is just for protecting uh, really against this new trend that we're seeing, this whole concept of AI, right? Um, AI is uh, coming on fast and furious and a lot of organizations don't know what to do with this. It's, it's just trending so quickly. They can't 
keep up with uh, what users are doing and what they're putting into these AI engines. So they're actually just blocking these sites. And it really takes away a, a very productive productive tool for some of their end users can, that can really benefit from these. So the idea here is to put some, again, some controls and guardrails when your users are working with these AI sites. We can use our built-in DLP, the data loss prevention service, to ensure that you don't have sensitive and proprietary data being leaked out into these sites. Because once these sites learn about your source code and any employee ID numbers, they won't unlearn it, right? So you don't want these types of information to, to get out to these AI engines. Uh, we can also coach the users on how to use these sites just to remind them to be careful. And there's, there's a lot of tools in here that will just, uh, again, provide some guardrails and ensure that your users are using these tools um, in, a, in a productive but secure manner. Yeah, next slide, please. And again, this is all being cloud delivered. So as we make updates and enhancements and new capabilities, oh, you're getting those in real time, right? Because being that it's in the cloud, we can push these updates on a continuous basis. So all of these controls will continue to be enhanced and additional controls will also be added in real time. The next slide here is just to kind of wrap up what uh, Mo touched on earlier in the slide and um, all the different capabilities that we have in our cybersecurity cloud. Right. We have a lot of different use cases that, that we've touched on, and we'd be happy to set up a call to dive deeper into any of these use cases where you may have some interest, and we would look forward to explaining those in a deeper level with you. Yep. Thank, thank you, James Mo. So this is, a, this is a very, very powerful tool that we've seen this use, and, and this can even be used even if it's not with the Cradle Point router. So we, they, um, you know, uh, Cradle Point uh, picked up Aircom as one of the top cyber solutions out there and when you know when you think about creating a sandbox this i always talk tell customers oh, it's like i'm selling them the internet of the internet so it beams back that image and keeps that uh keeps everything in a sandbox so there's no way to execute anything bad so they this is a really good way to to do that and and so we're trying to help you do is build an ecosystem here right so you've seen the router so far you've seen the uh the aircom piece now when you're going out to the internet or other sites that are not uh, in a in a tunnel, right? So now we're going to move to the tunnel piece. Um, I don't know if the um, the radio IP people are on. If not, I can cover for them. Yeah, so Brian. I don't think they were able to make it into our Zoom room. So if you want to cover for them, that'd be great. Let's talk about VPNs. So there is a lot of uh, issues that we see out in, in VPNs, and and there's and there's several of them out there. Some of the biggest ones that we typically hear about are having to uh, re-put in credentials all the time from being disconnected. The biggest one that we get a lot of complaints on is how slow is my VPN, right? So that, that's typically what um, is the biggest draw when you talk to people about VPNs is what is that real throughput? Because uh, we, we've we seen VPNs do as much as 80% cut in speed out there, which is you know detrimental if you're trying to do it. So a lot of companies have started doing the, the procedure of pushing through the pipe, um, only those applications that they want that need secure access to certain um, resources. And then everything is pushed outside that's regular to the internet and they let the end user you know, hit on their computer or on their device and go out to the internet. The problem with that is, is that that opens up an issue. That's kind of where that Aircom piece covers. So Aircom on the outside of the, of the, of the pipe radio IP or a, or a secure VPN um, on the inside of that pipe, right? And so that's what we've kind of done here. And just, so radio IP is what there um, is a well-known uh, application persistence VPN. So what does that mean? So I log in at the beginning of shift. As I drive around, if I lose any type of connections, you know, if there's any kind of breaks in the network, it does a keep alive into what I was accessing and then when I move back into coverage, so my, my, my router picks it back up or I access through Wi-Fi, it reconnects me as if I wasn't, um, I wasn't disconnected. And what's powerful about Radio IP specifically is they are well known to be one of the fastest VPNs utilizing this, this type of uh, this solution, but it also um, gives you the capability to hold for up to eight hours. So for instance, if I'm driving into an area 
and I was accessing something and I need to be off for like an hour or two and then move back in, um, it can do up to eight hours and reconnect the, the officer or the agency that's using this um, with a, right where they left off. So they don't have to rekey in their credentials. And so uptime is great. You're not, you're getting less calls to support and, and it makes it as a really robust um, a solution. Let me, I got an actual video here real quick. Let me show you to on what that speed looks like. And uh, let's see. So here they're going to engage. So they're using this over the cradle point router, right? So there, it's now engaged. The VPN is on. They're going to run a speed test with the VPN on, and then we're going to do it with the VPN off. So you can see that the amount of throughput is is very very negligible, which is 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 a powerful tool because what you want to do is keep your stuff secure, keep it connected right but not lose not lose resources in case you um if you need to access stuff so like for instance if we wanted to do a secure teams call we could utilize this solution to do secure comms are you guys seeing this now yep i'm tracking now we're going to disconnect it and we're going to run that same speed test again. So a very, very low, uh, a low loss of data speed when using a VPN. Now, the nice thing about this particular VPN is it, it costs less than most. It's faster than most and is, is a great solution that you can combine with your with Ericom and with Cradle Point to make a full end-to-end -end solution. So it's a, it's a very, very powerful tool. Uh, keep you connected, keep you going fast um, in any environment. Radio IP is well known for public safety. They do stuff like San Diego Sheriff, uh, New York Fire Department, Pennsylvania Highway Patrol, so, I mean, real big into keeping people secure. They also do enterprise as well. But um, yeah, their, their main thing is keeping people connected anytime, anywhere, anyhow. And they've got it in uh, different variations. Uh, they, they do sell this worldwide. So it can keep your CAD RMS. Uh, if you have to do CGIS for uh, law enforcement, uh, keep them connected to be CGIS compliant. So that, that is, uh, that's kind of Radio IP's um, um, thing. And now we'll, we'll kind of move into the question piece, but just kind of want to show you how these three pieces that I just showed you overlapped, right? So Cradle Point, obviously owned by Ericsson. We, build, we also build networks for people out there. We've got the cybersecurity piece with Ericom to keep that when you need to go to the inter internet secure. And then you, you can use a solution like uh, Radio IP, to uh, connect that tunnel piece when you need to access inside resources securely. So all those three things work well together. And then of course, ByteSpeed is our partner that kind of pulls all that together. Can we open it up for any questions out there or if there's any in the chat? Yeah, thank you, Brian. And, uh... Just a reminder to the audience, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, we will be sending you guys some the link to the recording, the slide deck, uh, and info on your Starbucks gift card as well. Uh, but happy to answer any questions while we're here. Is there any, or if there's anything you we didn't cover you want to discuss, just fire away.
You know, I'll hit on something while uh, folks are giving that a little bit of thought. So just just so you all know, um, uh, my partner, Brian Mancuso, who you heard talking, and I are both uh, strictly responsible for law enforcement, public safety, and public sector in general for the states that, uh, that we've got responsibility for. So we live, eat, and breathe um, frontline folks, um, uh, law enforcement, public safety, and public sector. Um, and I, you know, that's, that's one of the things that uh, I think is most attractive about Cradle Point for law enforcement uh, partnerships out there. You know, we, we really, we really build and design our hardware and software to the needs of law enforcement specifically. Um, the demands are high and we do that for that reason exactly. We know that if we can build and meet the demands of law enforcement and uh, first responders, that it will work extremely well um, in other applications. So um, I just wanted to make sure that you all knew that uh, we build and design with uh, you all in mind at the forefront. So. Any other, do we have any questions or anything in, in the chat at all? I don't believe so. Well, we can um, we can send this out to everybody. If you've got any questions, make sure you you know you know filter them back through um, uh, Byte Speed. They can get in touch with us as well. Um, you know, we all the stuff is is testable, like the Aircom solution. Uh, you know, when it's a client list. Uh, ability to access the internet um so you know uh, it's a real, real easy way to do it uh, radio ip uh, also has a very easy way to test their vpn and of course uh, critical point um we do pocs all the day long if somebody wants to test our hardware on an idea um you know we definitely work with with everybody so let us know how we can help and you know thank you Thank you all for attending. Uh, please keep an eye out for an email from me. Thank you, guys.